A really simple but I think worthwhile topic talking about it on this channel is the difference between threshold and tempo. Had an athlete ask it in the comments on a previous video the other week, and I thought, you know what, it's a perfect time to bring back to some of these basics. We have been talking a few topics that have gone a little bit more in depth over the last little while uh, and asking some very specific questions, but at the end of the day, a few people watching this channel or a number of people watching this channel might be brand new into endurance, and we have to remember that things like tempo and threshold we might take for granted, but someone might actually not know what it is. So that's what we're going to break down today. A little bit of science and physiology in there, but really Really simply, what is the difference between tempo and threshold? Hey guys, Nick here. Welcome back to the channel, talking science of endurance and everything sports science in general. Welcome to the channel. If you're watching for the first time, please consider subscribing down below by hitting that big red button. Keep supporting the channel. We've got a great community building here and it's the best way to keep up to date with when we're going to go live and answer your questions, cover some topics along the way, have a bit of a discussion, been really enjoying that process so far. Great way to get your questions answered on endurance, on sports science, anything to do with the industry in general. Really, it's a free for all of ask whatever you like and we'll, we'll work our way through it and try to help each other out along the way. Today's video as I said in the introduction, is all about threshold versus tempo. What are these, these fundamental differences? And something we often take for granted is a lot of athletes coming into endurance sport may not actually know the difference between what a threshold and tempo session is. And I actually think a lot of coaches and athletes who've been in the industry for a number of years couldn't actually tell me if, they, if I sat them down and asked them, what is the difference? What is the actual difference between tempo and threshold? They wouldn't really be able to tell me clearly the difference. They'd kind of say it's all the one. Really fundamentally, the difference between the two is one, threshold, to start with is the theoretical intensity. So threshold itself is a theoretical intensity you could hold for 45 to 60 minutes. Whether you're a cyclist, whether you're a runner, rower, whatever it may be, 45 to 60 minutes is your threshold. Threshold being anaerobic threshold, lactate threshold, they all mean the same thing. This is that, that tipping point where we have blood lactate accumulating in our system at a rate that which we can still clear it out quite effectively. This is, this is what we call our, our lactate inflection point, um, our, our anaerobic threshold. Beyond that point, things start to get a bit harder because our body can't create aerobically based energy, so it can't get oxygen into the system, transport it to the working muscles, and then use it fast enough. So it needs some supplementary energy from the anaerobic systems to just get us a little bit, a little bit closer to where we need to. It's not providing the massive amount, the anaerobic systems. The aerobic is doing a fundamental part of the work. The anaerobic has to chip in a little bit. That's why we have now an increase past threshold of blood lactate. And what does that lead to? That leads to we start to fatigue a little bit quicker. So that balance point where we can produce a little bit of lactic acid but clear it out equally, and that last point that we can manage that before our accumulation starts to exceed what we can remove is our threshold. So when we're going out and doing threshold type sessions, we're truly trying to target that ability to have blood lactate accumulate and then be able to clear it out. So we quite often work on things like two to one work to rest ratios, three to one work to rest ratios. Two to one really simply might be 10 minutes on, five minutes off, or five minutes on, two and a half minutes off. What does that allow us to do? It allows us to get a little bit of uh, lactic acid accumulation in the system. So we work at, say your, your threshold is at four minute K pace. I'm just using it as a round number. Four minute K pace, you might work at just above uh, or, or just below maybe four or five for a little bit longer, but typically at or just above threshold, use a really good stimulus, bit of lactic acid in the system, short recovery, keeps that lactic acid in the system a little bit. So you get better at tolerating it, better at buffering it, shoveling out, doing a whole bunch of physiological processes to be better at managing that. And so instead of being able to hold four minute K pace for 45 minutes, now it's closer to 50 minutes, or maybe it's closer to 65 minutes, 70 minutes, depending on the type of athlete you are and the, the part of your training you're in. Where it differs to tempo, is tempo is this in-between. It's often termed a gray zone because it kind of is this no man's land of we're not really 100% threshold. We're not working on that, um, that tipping point where lactic acid is really starting to accumulate faster and we can get rid of it. But we're also not working this long, slow, easy endurance, um, aerobic endurance, base case, whatever you want to call it. We're not working that all day pace. We're now in this in awkward in-between where we're pushing a little bit of lactic acid so a, a typical threshold would be about four millimoles of lactate. That's for, for the most people. Some people are going to be a little bit higher up at six. I've seen as low as sort of three, three and a half as well. Let's work off the, the average of most people are at four millimoles of blood lactate at their threshold. A tempo would be something like three millimoles of lactate. So a little bit lower, but still elevated. And then a genuine long, slow run where we're building base case and really, really aerobic is going to be like less than two and a half millimoles. So we're kind of in this no man's land of we're producing a bit, but the body's handling it really well, but it is still going to be challenging. It's not really going either way though. It's not stressing us enough to get that threshold stimulus, but it's also a little bit too much to get us that really, really genuine aerobic benefit. 
So why do we actually do it in the first place? Well, it's really race specific. This is the actual intensity that you're probably going to be racing. Things like um, for for the average amateur, probably half half marathon, marathon, uh, maybe a seventy point three, depending on how quickly you're racing it. Um, typically, the higher end of the spectrum is going to be racing sort of a tempo rather than uh, sort of a zone two, 90 minutes, two hours, three hours maybe. And again, depending on how quickly you're racing, if you're a low four hour Ironman, you probably are going to be racing in a bit more of a tempo for you rather than a zone two. So really, we're, we're, we're just trying to target some race specificity in these types of sessions. It's just getting you used to running at that particular pace. And when I use the example before of four minute K pace being a threshold, if you want to go out and run a half marathon at um, 415 pace, that would be like going out and do, or 420 pace, that would be like going out and doing tempo work to just practice running at that pace. But the downside is, because we're not really doing anything, we're not stressing the body hard enough to change our threshold and we're not doing it, we're not working easy enough to work on our, our aerobic qualities in terms of developing our usage of oxygen, the pathway of oxygen through the system. Because it's kind of this weird blend of both, it's somewhere in the middle, it's only really good for that specificity. So I wouldn't be doing lots of it. And that's a one common mistake I see a lot of athletes make and a lot of programs have, is that every week they have some sort of tempo, which is from from my perspective, it isn't really doing much because we're sitting in this middle period kind of, I, I would much rather you go and do really easy or you go and do some sort of interval-based work and have a really quality session either way. Maybe if you're particularly targeting a specific event, half marathon, etc., go and do a handful of sessions in the last four, six weeks just for some very specific preparation. That's perfectly okay. I'm not saying it doesn't have a time and place at all. But when we do it week in, week out for 12 months, it's just this unnecessary fatigue that we're not working easy enough to get aerobic adaptation. We're not working hard enough to get a threshold adaptation. I would rather just spend my time either side of that uh, and go deliberately easy or deliberately hard or even go harder again and target VO2 max to then get a much better response and a better performance outcome overall. So if that clears up in terms of the difference between threshold and tempo, I'm gonna keep it right, quite simple there and leave it there because really that's all it needs to be. It's just the, the clear difference and that's why I kind of merge them into the same training zone when I work with athletes. It's because we kind of getting similar response across the board, but it's also the type of thing, I don't do a lot of it. So when I do, I can make that clear distinction in training of, hey, we were doing lots of threshold work here, we're actually just gonna drop it back a bit. So it almost kind of becomes its zone in itself and often it will be a, a separate zone um, depending on the system you're using. Hopefully you got something out of the video today. Let me know if you do have any questions between the difference between tempo and threshold. Do you do a lot of tempo and are you maybe thinking of not doing it or do you not do any tempo and you think maybe you should add it in as a bit of that specificity immediately before you race? Let me know in the comments down below. As always, ask your questions there. Happy to help you out where we can. As always, make sure you are subscribing to the channel. It's the best way to keep supporting the channel and, and keep it growing. Build this great community we've got. Don't forget to keep looking out for some of those live screams. Go check me out on Instagram. All of those good things to, to get involved and get your questions answered because that's how this video is made. It's on the back of a great question that came through the comments on a previous video. I'm going to leave it there. That is it for today and we'll see you in the next one.